If you're into mechanical keyboards, then you're probably into different mechanical switches. And if you're into different mechanical switches, then you need a hot swappable keyboard. Hi Digmates, I'm Dominique, Head of Communications at Digma. And in this video, I'll be talking about what hot swappable switches are, how and why they came about, plate mounted and PCB mounted switches, why you would need a hot swappable keyboard, and most importantly, how to remove and replace the hot swappable switches from your keyboard. So what are hot swappable switches? Basically, they are switches that you can replace individually, meaning they're not soldered onto your keyboard and you can pull them out anytime you want. This is an awesome feature because majority of the keyboards have their switches soldered onto them, which means that in order for you to replace a switch, you would need to replace the entire PCB or just get a new keyboard. Keyboard manufacturers do this because it's the easiest and cheapest way to manufacture durable keyboards at a massive scale. But then we started seeing more and more mechanical switch options. Inevitably, keyboard enthusiasts started modding their own keyboards, changing their switches, desoldering and soldering the ones that they liked best. And it was only in the last five years that we started seeing keyboards that were compatible with hot swappable switches come into the market. So this is really a new feature. Out of all the big brands out there, I think it's just Logitech that has a hot swappable keyboard. If you think there are other big brands that offer hot swappable keyboards, I mean keyboards with hot swappable switches, please let me know in the comment section below. Hot swappable keyboards normally have plate mounted switches, which means that the switch is mounted onto the plate, as opposed to PCB mounted switches, which means that the switch is soldered onto the PCB. Then there are also switches with three pins and five pins at the bottom. If you see here, I have my array of switches. If you see the back, some have two pins and some have five. Let me just maybe get one so that you can see it clear. One switch has five pins and the other has three. So the extra two plastic pins are actually for stability when mounting the switch onto the PCB. So not all hot swappable keyboards have that extra two holes on their PCB. Just remember that when you're buying your hot swappable keyboard or when you're buying your switches. Of course, if your PCB doesn't have the two extra holes and you have a switch with five pins, then that's not a problem. You can always just chop the two pins out of the way. But lucky for you guys, the Digma Race is compatible with the three pin switch and also the five pin switch. Adding hot swappable switches is a risky option for any manufacturer because you are giving room for the user to tinker with the hardware and exposing its weak spot. Where is the weak spot? Well, it's in the sockets. Here's a PCB of the race keyboard and these little guys are the sockets. They are delicate components and if they are not soldered correctly onto your keyboard's PCB, there's a chance of them breaking when you replace your switches. How do we know? Well, we should know. We manufacture keyboards that are designed for hot swappable switches. So you can say this is our area of expertise. In our experience, finding the perfect soldering technique took a lot of tries and sacrifices, especially among the sockets population. Despite its delicateness, the Race and other high-end hot swappable gaming keyboards have this feature with no chance of damaging the sockets, provided that you mount your switches correctly. More on that later on. Why should you get a hot swappable keyboard? Well, the ability to swap your switches gives you a wide variety of customization possibilities without needing to spend a lot of money buying a new keyboard. Want to experience having tactile, linear and clicky switches all in one keyboard? Do you need a more silent keyboard during the day because you work with other people, but also like listening to the clicky sound whenever you game? Or if you're not sure which switch type you like? Take it from me, I've tried Cherry MX Blue, MX Red, MX Brown, Kale Speed Copper, Kale Speed Silver, Gatoron Greens, Kale Speed Gold and Bronze. And it took me all of these tries and experiences to realize that I really, really like the Kale Speed Silver switches. Although I know a lot of people don't like them because they're very, very sensitive. If any of you out there are Kale Speed Silver lovers, 
please give me a shout in the comment section below. Another thing is that every time you get a new set of switches, it's like you're getting a new keyboard. Because let's face it, removing the keycaps, removing the switches, and then maybe lubing the new switches if you want, and then mounting them again on your keyboard just gives you a fulfilling feeling. It's like you've customized it to be your own. So the question now is, which switch is right for you? After all, there are so many different choices. And I guess the best advice I can give for now is just try them. Buy a set, well, first buy a hot solvable keyboard, and then buy a new set of switches, try them out for a few weeks. If you don't like them, try another set. But don't forget to check with the manufacturer of the keyboard to see which switch is compatible with your device. Then we proceed to the most important part, which I've saved for last replacing the switches. Despite the efforts of manufacturers to reinforce the sockets, you still have to be very careful when you remove and replace the switches. I can't stress this enough. Please be patient and gentle with the switches. First, you have to make sure that you use the proper tool when removing them. Normally, hot swappable keyboards include a keycap and switch puller. Some switches require you to clip the top and bottom part and others need to be clipped on the sides. And then insert them correctly. Make sure the pins are aligned. And if you have an RGB switch, you can also check that the hole where the LED light shines through should be at the top. Don't push or pull the switch if you have the slightest feeling that something might break. The only way you can break a socket is if you insert the switch incorrectly and if you forcefully push it in. And believe me, this has happened. So please be careful. If you encounter a problem when replacing the switches, the best option is to contact the manufacturer. If you need more information about removing and replacing the switches, here's a detailed video of the entire process. So what do you guys think? Would you get a hot swappable keyboard? Do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that I can get a raise. Thanks guys, till the next one. Salamat!